Hey everyone, I'm Nikolas Kuschnik and I'm accompanied by my co-author Lukas Vasholt. Today we'll be telling you about BVAR, an R package for Bayesian vector autoregression models with hierarchical prior selection. First I'll talk to you what actually is a vector autoregression model, then why you might want to estimate a Bayesian hierarchical model, and then Lukas will demonstrate what BVAR is and how you actually use it. So first things first, Vector autoregression models are a generalization of univariate autoregressive models. The idea is that there's interdependencies between lagged values of all variables and they're used, for example, to perform analysis of monetary policy, also to forecast and for structural analysis. So the specification of a VAR model looks as follows. And the thing to note here is that the vector of dependent variables yt also appears on the right hand side in a lagged form and you have aj, which are m by m coefficient matrices. Now, since there's a lot of coefficients, there's quite a dense parameterization, also referred to as the curse of dimensionality. Now, this is a problem for estimation, which in a Bayesian setting is uh, dealt with by imposing extra structure, by informative prior beliefs. So the idea is you have some kind of additional information that allows you to estimate larger models and thus mitigating the curse of dimensionality. The issue is how to choose these priors and how to choose their parameters. Um, so in the multivariate context, flat priors don't work as well and you need some kind of information in your prior. And uh, yeah, a preferred source of information is economic theory, as demonstrated by Villani, who places his priors on the steady state, which is usually well understood by economists. Another approach would be to just maximize the fit with respect to the parameter and set it to this. The, yeah, what to carry away from this is basically there's uncertainty about these parameter values or these prior parameters. And in a Bayesian hierarchical model, this uncertainty and this extra information that may be present in the data can be captured. Basically, we extend Bayes' theorem here um, in a simple way, and where y denotes the data, theta are bar coefficients, and gamma is a set of additional hyperparameters. Now, this is quite appealing in a, uh, in a theoretical way, but it's often hard to implement. Now, to get around the implementation and improve um, efficiency or computational efficiency, BVAR uses a conjugate normal inverse vision prior setup. So beta, our coefficient vector, is then conditionally on sigma, just a normal density, and sigma comes from an inverse vision density. And our prior parameters, B, uh, B, omega, psi, and D are just functions of, the, of a vector of hyperparameters gamma. Now, one prior from this normal inverse Virchow family is the Minnesota prior, which implies that variables follow random walks, uh, which are also known for their aptitude at Wall Street analysis. Um, the, the parameters of a Minnesota prior are lambda, alpha, and psi. For more details, you can see our working paper, but just to sum up, lambda controls the overall tightness, alpha shrinks more distant observations, and psi shrinks lags of variables other than, dependent, than the dependent. The, the issue with the Minnesota prior is that it has a deterministic component because it primes the, the model on the initial values, which is often counteracted by additional priors, such as the single unit root and sum of coefficient priors. Now, these are in BVAR, which allows you to estimate and analyze such models quite, quite hassle-free. Now, the features are, for, for one, the flexible prior construction. The Minnesota prior is always there as a baseline, and you can also include some of coefficient and single unit root priors, or construct your own dummy priors from the normal inverse Wishart family. You can also fine-tune the posterior exploration of the metropolis hastings step. Uh, you could perform forecasting and, uh, and structural analysis, for example, with impulse response fun functions, and you have the FRED MD and FRED QD datasets included. Yeah. So much for BVAR. Now, how do you actually use BVAR? And I'll hand over to my colleague Lucas, who will tell you about this. So, yeah, thanks. Um, I will just go quickly through the functionalities of BVAR and how to use them. And to do that, I will just go through a typical workflow, uh, which consists of preparing the data, customizing the prior setup and the sampler setup, then estimating the model and analyzing its output. So first of all, um, we'll start by loading the package and then we already jump right directly to the data preparation. For this example, we chose to use six variables from the Fred QD database um, which uh, among others include uh, the gross domestic product and the federal funds rate. Um, before we want to 
you draw an estimator model, we may want to transform these uh, variables um, for which the helper function thread transform can be used. Um, you can either provide your own transformations or use the ones suggested by the Federal Reserve Bank. And as you can see here, after transforming uh, our variables, uh, our time series, um, we, quickly, we can clearly see that they are non-stationary, which we have to keep in mind um, when uh, setting up our triads, for which we, uh, which we do right now. Um, so as Nicholas, uh, Nicholas already mentioned, the Minnesota prior is always included as a baseline. And with the function VVMN, we can uh, set up its uh, hyperparameters. Um, so for this example, we chose to use uh, to only treat lambda, uh, the tightness parameter, hierarchically, while alpha is fixed to its mode um, and not treated hierarchically. Um, the resulting object can then be passed on to the function from the priors, which collects all priors. And there we also add the sum of coefficients prior, as well as the single unit group prior, which are useful when dealing with um, non-stationary data. Um, as a last step, um, we adjust the metropolis hastings step um, to achieve ex ex an acceptable um, uh, an acceptable uh, acceptance rate here to ensure convergence of um, our hyperparameters. After setting these things, we can provide it to the main function dbar together with the data x and information about the leg structure and how many draws to take. Um, when we then run our um, function, it prints some preliminary um, output as well as the time that it took for the MCMC chain to um, conclude. Um, after that, we can already move on uh, to assess the convergence of our hyperparameters. An easy and accessible way to do that is to call the idiomatic plot function, uh, and which uh, then creates trace and density plots for the hyperparameters of our priors, which we can um, uh, uh, actually treat it hierarchically. From this, we can already see that um, the hyperparameters converged, and we can uh, move on to our main functionalities of interest when we are doing uh, when we are dealing with. Um, vector autoregressions, which are to compute forecasts and um, do structural inf inference in the form of input responses. For these two um, applications, the uh, functions predict and IRF can be used, uh, where they are used to access, store, and compute um, forecasts or inference responses. So you can um, provide additional settings to these functions about, for example, the horizon for which uh, forecasts uh, should be computed. And this, uh, the resulting objects, you can pass on to the idiomatic plot function, uh, where you can also set which variables you want to plot, as well as some additional um, plotting parameters. Uh, when we now look at our forecast plot, we can see our for the three time series that we chose, uh, our forecast together with the credible bands in which are the gray shaded areas. These express uncertainty about our forecasts, and this also carries on to the inference responses, which give you an idea about how variables react um, following a certain shock in the economic system. For example, if we focus here on the right column, uh, we modeled here a monetary policy shock as an unexpected increase in the federal funds rate. And we can conclude from these, out from these outputs that gross domestic product as well as personal consumption expenditure um, decrease um, following an unexpected increase in the federal funds rate. So this um, concludes our brief overview of the main functionalities of um, of VMAR, of course, it provides a more extensive set. Um, for example, you can integrate it in your workflow using standard R methods, as well as an interface decoder to, for example, um, assess the convergence of the hyperparameters in a more statistical way. 
Uh, you can also run VMAR in parallel to efficiently compute um, multiple MCMC chains and use them for convergence assessment. And most importantly, VMAR provides different identification schemes for structural inference, such as sign restrictions. These can be accessed by the function VIRF. And it also provides um, the optionality uh, to compute um, custom scenario analysis. Uh, this, this, can be done, this can be done via conditional forecasts, which can be uh, adjusted using the function VFcast. So this uh, concludes uh, the brief demonstration of VMAR. And to sum up, VMAR uh, hands the user an easy to use and flexible interface to um, uh, estimate Bayesian bars with hierarchical prior selection. And VMAR is free software. You can contribute to it on GitHub, and it's a repository there. And if you need more details about the implementation of the various priors or also on the uh, usage of the other functionalities, you can find the working paper on ResearchGate as well as the vignette and the package on CRAM. So thanks and please do, don't forget to subscribe, comment and leave um, uh, a like for us.